In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the early medieval period, a custom developed in Rome on the fourth Sunday of Lent of the Pope solemnly blessing a rose and carrying it in procession. It's likely due to this tradition that in Germany today became known as Rose Sunday. All this at some point led to the permission to celebrate today's Mass in a color a little bit lighter than the usual violet as a way of reminding us that, Christmas, that Easter is near approaching. Today is best known, though, as Laetare Sunday, a Latin word which begins the Mass, which means rejoice. By, but what are we exactly rejoicing about during this penitential season of Lent? Historically, it is especially related to the catechumens, that is, those preparing to be received into the church, into the family of God through baptism at the Easter vigil. Thus, Holy Mother Church rejoices in anticipation of the birth of her soon-to-be new, newborn children. We might liken it to a baby shower of a soon-expectant mother. Perhaps inspired by this, an interesting custom developed many centuries ago in England, where young men and women who were living away from home returned to their mother church today. That is, the church where they were made children of God through baptism and likely also received the rest of the sacraments of initiation. When possible, these young Catholics would also go to visit their earthly mothers to bring gifts, including a rich plum cake, and even do some of the household duties for her on this day. What a wonderful custom to express gratitude for both the gift of life from our mothers and supernatural life from God in baptism. In today's second reading, St. Paul reminds us that God has reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Indeed, Christ has given his church a wondrous ministry of reconciliation, that is the sacrament of penance or confession. Now, it is certainly true that God had decided a different regular means to forgive sins other than through the sacrament. Yet, as Father Wilson states, Christ could have left us to the torturing uncertainties of direct confession to God, but he was too kind. Confession would be necessary to give us conclusive proof of pardon and the maximum relief and peace of mind. Indeed, confession is preeminently a sacrament of mercy, and so we must not make it into a worrying, nerve-straining experience. It may be surprising to many how little is required for us to make a valid confession. First, of course, we examine our conscience, call to mind our sins, and if it has been a long time, we could use a little examination conscience guide. We focus first on any mortal sins that we uh, have committed. It shouldn't be too difficult to figure this out since such sins are grave offenses to God, which we recognize while committing them and gave deliberate consent to them and so they should weigh heavily on our conscience. If we have committed, for example, such grave sins as using, uh, dabbling in occult practices, missing Sunday Mass without a serious reason, sins of impurity, contraception, drunkenness, drug use, malicious gossip, for example, we, might, we should not examine our, ourselves on, other venial, on other, any venial sins unless we think they contributed to the committing of those mortal sins. If we have only venial sins, we need to focus on just a few of them. We want to try to overcome with God's help and pray for sorrow for those sins that we are going to confess, including a firm purpose of amendment, especially by avoiding the irrigation of sin. When we confess mortal sins, we must say the sin specifically and also the number of times we committed it. Then we listen to the advice from the priest and then willingly accept the assigned penance which we would try to do right after the confessional, if possible. In today's parable, our Lord tells, of course, of the prodigal son, which expresses so well how God is willing to forgive us even when our sorrow is rather weak. Indeed, we need only imperfect contrition, that is, attrition, which is a sorrow for our sins based more on the fear of the punishment for them namely hell for mortal sins, rather than out of the love of God. So Father Wilson says, God is willing to forgive our mortal sins just because we have turned to him 
with a feeble love, which is largely selfish and occasioned principally by a prudent regard for the security of our own skin. And doesn't this perfectly describe the selfish motives of the prodigal son when he realized he'd be better off going back to the father even as a worker so that he wouldn't starve to death? For those who might be reluctant to come to confession because of many mortal sins or maybe a long time being away, and in the uncertainty especially of whether you will be able to avoid committing these sins in the future, please realize that as long as you are determined to try to avoid mortal sin and its near occasions, are, are open to the advice of the priest confessor and are willing to do the penance, you should have enough contrition to be forgiven in the sacrament of penance. Here, then, the penitent may experience those wonderful words of St. Paul today. Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, the new things have come. Let us especially pray for our baptized RCI candidates who are, around this time, making their first confession in preparation for their conversion to the Catholic Church at the Easter Vigil. On this Laetari Sunday, may our Blessed Mother, St. Joseph, and all the angels and saints inspire us to energetically push forward an extra, extra Lenten, Lenten penance, prayer, and almsgiving so that we may be better prepared to truly rejoice on Easter Sunday. May we pray for our catechumens who are preparing for the reception into the church, become part of the family of God, and grow in gratitude for our own baptism and the sacrament of penance and through de devout reception of the sacraments, allow the Holy Ghost to make us more fully a new creation in Christ, and even live out the, the beautiful words of today's responsible song sung by our beautiful choir. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.